world-famous detective Benoit Blanc is invited to participate in a weekend murder mystery on a private island with some of the world's richest and most influential people. Knives Out surprised the heck out of me back in 2019. It ended up being my favorite film of that year. Now, I had seen most of the movies and TV shows that Ryan Johnson had made, and I was pretty lukewarm on everything. So I was pleasantly surprised at just how well-written and directed Knives Out was. Every character was memorable, and the mystery was so well-constructed. When I heard an entire series of movies based on the southern drawl genius detective Benoit Blanc was in work, I was on board, but cautiously. The way that Knives Out's story was constructed was so perfect, it felt like it would have taken a team of writers years to fit all of those pieces together. I was hoping this wasn't going to be the case of striking while the iron was hot and releasing a sequel while the original was still popular, just not allowing adequate time to construct another masterpiece. My fears were mostly unfounded. The original Knives Out ended in a way that would not make sense for any character other than Detective Benoit Blanc to come back. The new cast is all great, and I like everyone individually, but I don't think they worked as well together as an ensemble cast as the cast in the original. It may just be that the formula of Glass Onion is similar to Knives Out, and it doesn't feel quite as original. Even so, I enjoyed every minute of this movie. I started to feel like the movie maybe wasn't so much of a mystery as it is a movie like the horror comedy masterpiece One Cut of the Dead. The first half of the movie shows you a story, and you think you know what's going on, but then the second half, you watch that story again but this time from another perspective with additional details and everything changes. Each character is unique and obnoxious in their own way. From the inappropriate blonde tweeter to the tattooed muscle-bound twitch streamer who wears a gun even in the pool wearing nothing else but a speedo. The interactions between the characters are some of the best and most humorous parts of the movie. Glass Onion feels very much like a movie made in the 2020s. Everything revolves around social influencers and tech billionaires. Things that may feel dated in a decade. And since it takes place in early 2020, COVID is part of the story, at least initially, with many of the characters wearing masks at the beginning of the movie. None more hilarious and ineffective than Kate Hudson's character. Can her mask be considered a joke if in real life people wore similar masks and weren't joking? Only time will tell if this movie ages well or not. And even if it doesn't, maybe it will be like those 80s movies that feel dated but in a good way, like a time capsule of the era that it was made. The private island featuring the titular Glass Onion and all of the other set pieces are more extravagant than the mansion in the first Knives Out film. And much like the first movie, everywhere you look there is something pretty and interesting. Heck, even the chairs in Glass Onion are interesting. Daniel Craig's Benoit Blanc is just as charming this time around, but he seems more out of his element. In the first film, he always felt one step ahead of everyone. But here, he is much older than the rest of the cast, not as rich, and not as famous. The dynamic just felt different, which I actually really appreciated because it doesn't feel like a rehash of the first movie. Now, reading about Glass Onion after after it ended makes me want to watch it again. There are so many Easter eggs and nods to other movies, other people, and events that I just totally missed. The attention to detail is unreal. It turns out Ryan Johnson had plenty of time to write a script that is every bit as charming and intricate as the first film. Now I know a third film is in the works and I kind of hope that it's a flashback to one of Benoit Blanc's earlier cases that is mentioned in The Glass Onion but never elaborated on. If we get one more great film with Daniel Craig as Benoit Blanc, I can see this character going down as one of the all-time great detectives along with Columbo, the Pink Panther, and even Sherlock Holmes. Crystal sculptures, drinking kombucha, kneeling next to a miniature Porsche cooler, getting a lesson on classical music from Yo-Yo Ma, guns and motorcycles, wearing a yellow scarf in the pool, solving intricate puzzle boxes, 